Why, hello, everybody. This is David Breen, the creator of Omega Mouse. And today I'm going to show you how to use a game instance blueprint to save your data between levels. Now, because Omega Mouse is an action RPG, you are going to travel across the galaxy and you can return to previous locations to explore and whatever. So as you come back, you want certain objects to that you have destroyed to be gone, not be there after they've been removed. And you want the game to remember this information. So to do this, you create your game instance blueprint by right clicking down here, blueprint class, and then you type in game instance under all classes. And there it is, game instance. I've already have one. I called mine the global data. So all of your information on all your objects that you want to have saved are stored here. So event begin play. You cast the global data. And we'll get into step by step exactly what you have to do. Try to keep this as quick as I can. So what you do first is you create two variables. And they're going to be name variables. One will be an array, so I name this one Asteroid Array and Asteroid ID, which is not an array, and you want to expose the Asteroid ID by clicking the I, little I icon here. All right, so compile that. Event begin play, we want to cast to global, cast to global data, or since I already have it set up, I can just copy and paste plug that in so once you cast to your game instance which I named global data you drag off the object here and you just type in get game instance and now we want to take the same variable that we created here the asteroid array and we want to create that with the same name in the global data so that we can grab it from there and get the get that information so let's go to the global global data here are all the variables that are saved throughout the game such as your health experience and all your items so we'll create another variable and this one will be the asteroid array Make sure you make it a name and that you click here and make it an array, which is the nine squares. And you're done there. Now this array is going to be the one that we want to actually create all of the elements for, such as like this, clicking the plus, because at the beginning of play for your actual asteroid, you are grabbing this global data. So if I compile, I can drag from as global data and say get asteroid array. And then we're going to set the asteroid array in the actual asteroid to the array to make it match and sync up with whatever is inside the global data. So now we want to type in asteroid 1 and asteroid 2, asteroid 3, just to start out with. Actually, we want to make this asteroid 0, 1, and 2, just to match up with the actual index numbers. Compile that. And then next, we want to find out if your array here on your asteroid or whatever object you're using we want to find out if it contains your Omega Rock unique ID which you are going to assign to each asteroid so we drag off here and we ask it if it contains and we grab our asteroid ID put that in and then we have to put in of course a branch asking the question if it contains that and if it doesn't contain it that means it's been deleted 
So we want to destroy the actor. And if it is in the array at the beginning of play, then it stays there and nothing happens. Now I've got some code here that was in there before, so I'll just drag this to the front. Compile. Now we need to have a way to actually remove the asteroid ID from the array. And then once it's been removed, tell the global data array to update. And this is accomplished on the component fracture. Once the component, the object has been destroyed, we want to cast to the global data again and remove the array for your object from the global data from or remove the Omega Rock ID from that Omega Rock array. So I'm just going to copy and paste, go down here to fracture. And we want to remove, so we're going to remove, oops, get your array. backwards here we're getting the array now that's right the array and we're removing the ID it's a little confusing sometimes plug that back in so this is removing the asteroids ID the specific instance of this asteroid it's removing it from the global data in real time and then whenever you reload the map that contains these asteroids, it will be removed. And that should be all I have to do. So let's go ahead and test it out. We got to click on an asteroid. And you see down here, we have asteroid ID. So type in asteroid zero. And we'll put that next to the player so we know which one it is. And let's try it out. So we destroyed that asteroid. That's the one that's closest to this planet. So let's land on the planet. And then we'll come back and see if the asteroid's gone. It's taking a little bit to load for some reason. Okay. Asteroid's gone. It worked. Yeah. Problem is, all the asteroids are gone. They're all gone. And that is because none of them are in the array. They're not on the list. And that's the ID, this unique ID we get right here, asteroid zero. And so since none of these are in the array yet, they're all gonna disappear. So we wanna make sure we say asteroid one, that's asteroid zero. This one here will be asteroid two, and each asteroid needs to have its own unique ID. So you just go back into your global data and keep adding elements. And you go that, number three, so forth, so on, so on, so forth. You get the idea. Well, thank you for watching, and I hope you all have a great day.